you tell about vitalism? What is it? How to introduce a layman into the subject? Well, let's begin with saying that the world is an organic art museum. It is a place of permanent flow of forms, in the meaning of living shapes. The place where every element of the world constantly confirms its own presence at every moment. The world components are constantly processed and interpreted by every entity as well as created as the next stage of itself or a totally new one, co-created, correlated with others, completed by correlation, experience and time. All the world's elements you meet, animated, primarily animated by nature and secondarily invented by man, can influence one another. They are able to mutually interact with one another all the time and create new dependencies and random sequences that will always form a fluid synthetic mosaic. Like such a jigsaw puzzle in which every combination of pieces is possible because each word puzzle has an unlimited number of connections. You can project and construct totally eclectic postmodernist spaces and situations, and it will always be like an excellent 3D game without freezes or glitches. You can travel or sit in an armchair all days. You can play with strangers. You can tell anything to anyone. You can look at 3D tree, you can touch the textures and states of matter. An animal can eat a man, fire can burn our monuments. Everything, even the most bizarre collage of forms, shapes, sounds, people, scenes, combinations, is possible and will always fit in this game on this canvas. You emphasize the word form by concentrating on the pure forms themselves. You also refer to the world of art in the context of nature. In the museum you mentioned before, is there any other content besides forms? What kind of works can we meet there? Yes, I refer to art, but I adopt this convention only to facilitate understanding of the idea of vitalism. After comprehension, you don't need to stick to this terminology. You asked about works. In vitalistic world, artworks are everywhere. They are forms that exist. They are movement, motion. With every step life creator takes, in every moment, art is being created continually. Art that had existed before the man invented art. Nature, with its laws, is the first artist. The content. The content is an impersonal energy force, thanks to which the forms begin to move. It is a hidden automatism, momentum. Something that has turned atoms into birds. A mechanism that allows and maintains the attraction of the male and female. Something that lies in a plant and distinguishes it from dead things. Something that makes the plant move, climb and grow in its hidden silent structure. Something that allows the plant to change on the smallest molecular level 
as well as to manifest on a larger scale. You can clearly catch and perceive some fragment of this in the unconditional process of breathing in the movement of your diaphragm. You can feel it in your heart beating and in your temple pulsation when you put your hand in their places. You can find and feel it in unconditional involuntary process of hearing as well as seeing, as well as an automatic perceiving of objects. These processes and manifestations are defined by a collective term life. Thanks to this force, I myself can be like a spider. No one knows what my next move will be. It causes that I move now somewhere in the infinite universe. It makes me stay on the ground, sit down when I want to, as well as create the culture together with the entire species. The culture and all social problems are always something secondary to this vital force. All behavior of living organisms is an expression of this force. I see in this point vitalism meets culture. People study architectural works, paintings and above all watch films to understanding something in there, some symbolism, cultural puzzle. However, what they see first is just pure life on the planet. The motion of these forms is seen first, culture comes after. We don't remember what we experience at every moment, it is a manifestation of life, a mysterious freedom. Every move is possible and is a manifestation of immaterial pneuma or a chemical and physical reaction as well, which started somewhere at the beginning of time and still vibrates at every moment. Pulsation of life at every moment in every expression and aspect. culture and social life imprison our mentality in a hermetic bubble. However, they also help us to order the world we live in. There are certain norms of behavior, accepted standards and principles. Yes, but these principles often blind us and cut us off from some some kind of mind's frequency which could make us more sensitive. That's why we don't ponder. We are covered with a pile of words, not seeing the pure reality in its raw way without cultural lenses. People adopt words of explanation of the existence and origin of life, but but they do it without authentic understanding. I mean, understanding what comes both from the mind and from the heart. It's something holistic, you know, and I could call it feeling understanding. This understanding, encored in every cell of your body, emerged as a breakthrough after years of individual contemplation about concrete topic, for example, your presence, cosmos, death. You need to put effort and devote part of your lifetime for this. You will not find it by only absorbing a way of seeing the reality we got from system, as suggested or imposed, that makes you no more engaged in philosophy of life. It will be also hard to find it if you spend your life in a rat race, 
or by making on and on new hedonistic plans about your free time. I think you also shouldn't be afraid of meeting with loneliness and silence sometimes. Did you mention the words of explanation of existence people don't feel? Yes, because there is too much superficiality today. Everything happens fast and words are hackneyed. People have no time to think longer about one topic. A lot of words to explain existence are not accompanied by their real meaning. An explanation like there was a big bang or God created humans, which is thrown, culturally dictated, does not make any sense. It doesn't root anyone in feeling understanding. It makes us temporarily and elusively calm. And also it releases us from thinking, from cogitation, from our own searching and meditation. Like when he was young, went to the church and repeated text during the mass, but you didn't really understand it because you didn't want to, and also there was too less focus in your awareness. You recited it and thought that you want to go home and do another stuff. A similar mechanism for routine actions and automatic habits works in everyday life. We think about something as something next and next we think we need to do. We are distracted because of these imaginary burdens. We lack understanding for foundations. What could make us simply more amazed and grateful but most of all serene and connected. Deep global learning needs constant training. Feeling understanding is like a rubber. When it's neglected, it shrinks to the previous shape. This is comfortable shape, I admit, but it's unproductive and barren. We have no time, there is no time, for active meditation in the everyday rush. The mystery is pushed to the depths of the unconscious by the claimed cliches. Don't you think you're a bit unfair? People have to deal with matters of everyday life to survive, so they don't have time for additional reflection. I think I've already given you enough data to consider this kind of doubts. If you need more clues, maybe try with looking at the word beyond language structure. Try to forget about names, don't think about personalities. Search. Actually, it's not good to call vitalism like that. Don't call it. Just look at it. Then, try to capture the world, the present moment, by using all of your senses at the same time in very conscious way by concentrating on each of them at the same time. Is it possible? I'd like to return to the issue of vitalism. Is it still related to it? Yes. We still talk about vitalism by talking about the tools we are and we have to perceive it. Man-woman is a live being who can see the vitality I'm talking about. Human beings have such powers thanks to which they perceive that they can participate in the creation. 
they have awareness that notices and appreciates, explores the only true genius, the original artist. The person, himself or herself, is also the work of this genius and all human creation are its secondary indirect products. Everyone is an artwork. Even if they party whole life and consume pop culture only. Or even if they are some kind of frustrated guys who offend everyone around. Everyone is an artwork. The human and the rest of life beings are the result which lay in the universe's potential. Every life organism behavior is at the part of this potential and expresses it like a tone expresses the song, like a singer sings the song. Sometimes when you look at living matter more carefully, it may even seem to be unreal. You can ask yourself, is it real? Or is it just a mental construct? A game? A delusion? A trick? A prison? A spooky prank? And you are a fool, blindly involved in emotions and mental wars. Could paradise be a bad trip? Being a part of this, both observing and participating in it, seems to have the same degree of uniqueness, amazingness and absurdity as the assumption about the spiritual world. If you told the spirit about the material world, it wouldn't have believed in that concept. Vitalism is, as you mentioned, something that precedes society and problems of individuals that are a result of past experiences, upbringing and convention of life. Is there anything else you'd like to mention about Vitalism? Yes. I'd like to emphasize that this world is not the war of machines, of cars and concrete bridges. Not the world of video games you can upload from the saved moment in case of a careless death. Something more basic has still been happening here. There is something in this earth. There is a living body. An organic body. There are living bodies here. There are their moves and something deeper that makes this movement possible for them. There is something more deeper that brought body to life. Something that makes life come from nothing, from void. That life is becoming. Something that makes that life form decide about itself and its next move and then make this living form Liveless. Something that makes that change. So, no matter what we do, there will always be a hidden manifestation of vitalism. We just have to open up to this frequency and catch the amazingness of the canvas, creation artistic pattern in which we participate, right? Yes, we do, and I like your metaphors. Now I understand what you meant before the interview, when you said that vitalism teaches us mindfulness and gratitude. We actually could feel melancholic due to the passing of time, which will make this grace stop for each of us one day. Yes, the time passes for eternity for every one of us. However, movement and form changing are a pattern. 
Returning to the artistic nomenclature, every move and act of creation is a manifestation of already existing artwork that just goes into a new form. Also, each meeting with wine and music in an intimate, friendly circle with unique people at 2 a.m. is a construction that will fall apart soon. The contexture that will fall apart. But thinking about evanescence, passing away, about that, for example, in the face of serious disease that reminds us that we are a biology, not a machine, can make us begin to appreciate the present moment more because we have less reasons to let our mind go forward. Every moment is like a farewell to our senses and cognitive abilities. Vitalism surrounds us. Does this perspective help in the everyday life? What is your current relationship to such perceived reality? What would you like to add at the end? A vitalistic art looks at the life through the prism I just talked about. Everyone can capture it. It is not necessity, but I still look for ways to express it, search for means of expression for forms and to capture movement time, energy, disappearing and returning, repeating. Between whiles, I would like to notice the fact that areas of thoughts, values and symbolic communication are also interwoven in that whole structure too. Those are interwoven in this soup of life, dense mycelium of interdependencies. Like when you pass by someone on the street, even it can influence. The stranger is now in your mind and you are in hers. Duplicated, multiplied, persist. Thoughts are the same things, the same phenomena, the same way life beings are. Freely modelable and ephemeral, but affecting the world of mutual interactions. Vitalistic art is conscious. This is art on the lowest and the simplest frequency or register. You do not have to look far. We participate in it constantly. Life pulsates at any moment. Imperceptibility has its pulse. Subtleties pulsate. Each element has its place here. It's autonomy in independence and connection. This manifesto is an introduction to further considerations. As not a religion but rational philosophy of nature, it could help you to comprehend life from more global perspective. You can try to look at life and not say about every stimuli you get. It is my view, it is my sound, it is my life, my holy moment that never come back. But it is a phenomenon and feeling that belongs to life. Mine means nobody's. Let's enjoy the feeling of breath and think this feeling doesn't belong to you, but to every of entity. It's common. Everything you experience is not mine, but it belongs to life. You represent it. And this is one of many perspectives you can perceive the world thanks to basics you get from vitalism. But I don't believe you can truly understand what I'm talking about until you try to be consequence in own reflections, water this mentality and gradually switch your mind. Just try to switch your mind frequency and play with it while you are still alive. Thank you very much for this interview. Thank you very much.
Yeah. <laughs> 